Hello and welcome to another lovely day here in beautiful Nova Scotia and welcome to my pallet production facility i.e. round the side of my shed. So those of you who've watched my uh, videos over the last year will know that I, I like knocking together something with uh, made out of pallets. It's cheap, readily available for me uh, and, and it's really versatile. You can you know make lots of different things like uh, what have I done? My cold frame, planters, this little um, Gucci little box that my boy puts all his stuffies in and obviously uh, my piece de resistance, the, uh, the greenhouse over there, which a lot of you followed and, and have commented on. And actually a few of you uh, have copied as well, which is, has been absolutely fantastic. I've had lots of different people sending in photographs of uh, the different ideas that they or the different greenhouses that they have made from my original idea so and that's what it's all about these youtube videos and and hopefully inspiring different people to use pallets to do hidden things um, but since then i did a video on how to take a pallet apart easy with no special tools you know just a, a hammer and a block of wood or a couple of blocks of wood but I had lots of comments from people saying, oh, that's all very well using those blocks of wood on those easy new pallets that you've got there. These old ones, I can never take them apart. So I thought to myself, why don't I do a video on everything you need to know about using pallets in making things, from what type of pallets you need to use for different things, um, how to take um, my different techniques for taking pallets apart, of course, my uh, usual technique doesn't work on every single pallet, but I, in those situations, my actions on are to use a different technique, and I will show you that technique today as well. So why don't we start with the different types of pallet? Now, as you can see up on the screen there, there are different types of pallet, or different types of pallet designation. You have what I normally use, in most circumstances, HT or heat treated ones. And as you can see on this block of wood here, they will normally have the little designation on there, heat treated. And that means they have literally been heat treated. There's no chemicals been, been added. So these, any sort of this sort of wood is safe to use if you're making planters or, or raised beds like I've made there for food. So these are safe for that. Then you have um, the designation KD, kiln dried. They are safe to use as well. And I think there may be one other one there. DB debarked, I think that's it, yes. So they're safe to use. Then you have the designation MB, which is the one you don't want to be using to be making things if, if it's going to be like food related um, and that's methyl bromide or something like that but basically it means chemically treated so you don't want to be using those um, for anything to do with producing food so then there are ones that are that probably don't have any um, signs on them at all but have colors on them as you can see here there's blue uh, red I've seen white and sometimes they'll actually have HT on them, but then they've got colours on them. That will mean that they have been chemically treated or there's some sort of chemicals on there. So again, you don't want to be using them for anything to do with producing food. I've got all of these big pallets here because I'm saving them up for my master project of this year, which is to build myself a shed out of pallets. Um, and I don't mind using these for the walls, etc., because um, they're okay for that. I won't be producing food in my shed. I might be potting a few things up, but you know, I won't. That, that's not a big deal. So I'm saving these up. I need 27, I think, in total. Nearly there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've got about 16, so nearly there on the way. But that's it. So colour, anything with colour on, don't use that for your food related raised beds or planters or anything like that. Okay, let's look now at the techniques for taking a pallet apart. 
So before we actually uh, go into taking this pallet apart, there's pal most pallets are hardwood, but not all pallets are hardwood. So you want to be looking out for that because obviously um, hardwood is better for working outside with for you know making planters and things like that because that wood will last longer it'll be more resistant to water and moisture etc so this is a softwood pallet you can tell it's lighter it doesn't look as sturdy this is a softwood what you call it cross piece not even a cross piece the long piece this is softwood this is a hardwood piece. You can feel it. it's heavier, it looks sturdier, more brittle, but this will be good for making something that's going to be outside. What else have we got? I think that's on that front. Why don't we look at a couple of different techniques for taking pallets apart? Okay, so we have a standard pallet. Um, looks quite new just broken that's why it's been chucked away so I will use my standard way of taking them apart one block of wood what I do is I take the block of wood put it under the pallet piece that I want to take away then I can either bang on the side or use another piece of uh, block if I don't want to damage the actual other slat and all I do is bosh give that a bang and then the next piece and then hold my hand on the on the actual um, slat itself those nails are quite long but because this is softwood it's quite easy to take apart so you know I could take that apart in about five minutes easy peasy and these are nice pieces of wood so I can use these and the actual big bits are nice so I can use them as well but that is not always as easy as that. So let's have a look at another pallet that may not be as easy to take apart. Oh, hang on. So if you've got, let's have a look here. Right. Let me just take, let me think, let me think, right. Okay, if you have a pallet where both sides have lots of slats and you think to yourself, right, ooh, how do I get these slats off? What you need to do is you will have to sacrifice one of these underneath. So get a circular saw and just saw one of these off underneath completely. Then get a bit of four by two, two blocks of wood the same size, take this off, and then you take the block of wood and you put it underneath, and then it's the same principle, So you're straddling whatever piece of wood is underneath here. Normally happens on end pieces actually, I should have done it on the end, but it's the same principle. Again, and this one I can just take off like that. Easy as that. Right, let's get on to the more difficult one.
Right, here's one of your chemicals treated ones. I'm just going to use this as a demonstration. Okay, this might have lot. This one's got lots of nails. So let's see if I can use my block method on it. Ah, well, it just so happens that it does. Um, so this is an old one, as you can see, old and, and scarred. See that? Am I too far on the edge? And hold that. Right, so we've got a more difficult one, but I think it's still going to come. managed to save that one even though it was quite tricky. I want to find one that's really difficult. Right, let's just treat this one as difficult. Okay, say you've, you've put your block of wood underneath here. And you've tried to bash it out. It's either stuck or it's going to split. What you're going to have to do is sacrifice the end bits. Because these are more likely to split, obviously because they're at the end. But if you sacrifice the end bits and then just try and bash out the middle bit, like my method, it will come out. I never know if they're going to be difficult until they're actually difficult. But what I'll do is show you the principle. So basically what you're going to have to do is just sacrifice the end. So as near to the nail as possible. Good cut. And the other side. This one's already got a bit of a split in it anyway. Right. So now we get our block underneath, this middle bit, because obviously it's got wood either side, is less likely to split. Fingers crossed. Where's the hand out? Here we are. This has got two bits in there. Bit of a persuader. Try this in. Voila. Now that's got four nails in it, quite hefty because it had two bits there. That was quite difficult to get out, but as I said, because it's the middle bit, you've sacrificed the end bits, the nails have come out. Now, 
it's not as long as you uh, wanted it maybe but it's only a little bit and you've still now got a nice bit of pallet wood knock the nails out and you can even save the nails and that'll work all the way along here so there you go there's a couple of different ways that's the couple of ways I use to get uh, pallet, take pallets apart my normal way pretty easy use the block of wood and then actions on it's they look like or well, you've tried one and you've already split one end of a piece of wood just go straight to sacrificing all the ends all the way along and then knock out the middle bits and it'll be a lot easier we've talked about the, um, the different types of of pallet always always HT KD or DB preferably HT for um, using to make any sort of uh, piece of equipment that you're going to use with making food excuse me black flies are coming out now and obviously the chemically treated ones you can use for other um, things but obviously not for vegetables etc I think that's it it's not that hard pretty simple and take my tips and you'll soon be knocking up things as I've shown you before and I'm going to show you again because I'm a bit of a show-off jobs are good and